I've been teaching since 2007, and one of the things I've noticed over the past five or six years was the increasing amount of pressure that students have been under. I've been trying to like think of different ways to address it through mini lessons and through just one-on-one -on -one conversations with students saying like, hey, you're, you're worth more than a test score and it's gonna be okay and all these things, but really it, it's, it's felt overwhelming to be a teacher in this time period and to, to, to kind of be fighting against a school system that is essentially saying, hey, you're worth this grade. And I don't think teachers necessarily feel this, but the end result ultimately is these, these grades and these test scores and these things that are telling students this is what you're worth. It's been really interesting because I've been waiting for this pendulum to swing, that either some sort of like new grading system to come along or, or something, some big wake up call for us to realize that there are more important things in life than these test scores. There's more important things than, than your, your SAT score or your grade or whatever. And, it's, it's hard to say that, that there's more important things, but then to have the reality that your grades can often determine a lot about the next few years in your life. Obviously, no one could have predicted this global pandemic to have the effects that it has had, but one of the really interesting things for me to kind of observe is the way the school system has responded. This pass no mark thing, the, the college is saying that, hey, uh, for the 2021 class, we're not really going to consider your SAT and ACT scores. For universities like Stanford to say, hey, we're going to go pass fail this semester. And really the message of all of that has been your family and your health and your life comes first. It's a message that we as teachers, and I know I've said to people, but on one hand we're saying this, but on another hand we're like, hey, this test, you have to pass this test. And we, it's not that we're trying to send a mixed message, but it often can be mixed. So almost this refreshing thing that I've experienced over the past month has been this message from our schools saying, hey, your family comes first, your health comes first. On the flip side of this pendulum swing is the realization, especially in the past week, that we would not be going back to school on campus this semester, which is a tough pill to swallow. I, I know for our seniors in particular, it's been really, really tough to look at these events coming up that we've planned and that we've looked forward to that are no longer going to, to happen. And it sucks. It really is. It really is a difficult situation to be in. So what I've tried to do over the past, I don't know, couple days is go through each class and look at what I think are almost silver linings, things that positives we can take from it. So I'm going to try and do that right now. Class of 2023, I feel like our freshmen are going to have such a unique perspective moving forward in high school. I feel like they're going to be the class that takes nothing for granted. They're going to be the class that each event that comes along, especially initially, they're going to be like, wow, we get this, we get to have this. And I think sometimes, uh, I know for me in high school, or just really through many periods of my life, I take things for granted. I take the fact like I've been lucky that I go to dinner once a week with my parents and with my brother and his wife and their kids and my kids and my whole family. We all go to dinner together. We can't do that anymore, and, or at least for the time being. And I know that's something I've taken for granted. I know when I get that back, I won't take it for granted. And I feel like our freshmen, you're gonna have this perspective sophomore, junior, and senior year where you know what it's like to have those events taken away. You've seen other people have those events taken away. And I don't think you're gonna take those things for granted. So having that perspective, I know a lot of us look at things in hindsight saying, oh, I wish I hadn't have taken that for granted. But you as freshmen are gonna have the opportunity for these next three years to take each event, each activity, each thing you get to be involved in, even the mundane aspects of high school, passing periods and those things, just being around people. I, I feel like your perspective is going to be entirely different than any class that's preceded you because of what you have gone through. I think you have the gift of not taking things for granted. Class of 2022, you are in an interesting position because you're about to be upper class people and I feel like you are in a position where you get to be the mentee and mentor. And what I mean by that is you have a group of freshmen who will have only finished like three quarters of a year of high school. They won't have a full year under their belt. You will have had a full year under your belt. So you will have the opportunity to mentor people who don't know what it's like to finish a year of high school, who's only, who've only had one set of finals to go through and all those kind of awkward things that you have to endure as a freshman, they've only endured like 75% of those. So you will have the opportunity to mentor them, to, to be guides for people entering their sophomore year, to, to teach them essentially how to sophomore. You also have the opportunity to learn from the people above you. Like I said with the freshmen, I don't think you'll be taking things for granted either, but you'll have finished a full year of high school. I think it's a gift to be able to teach and I think it's a gift to be able to learn. And I think the sophomore class going into junior year has the unique opportunity to do both. 
Class of 2021, I've been thinking about your class a lot because in, in my mind, you are going to be the un most unique class to have ever applied for college, or at least in recent memory. Typically, the college application experience is, is similar for most, most classes. Like they, they do the essay or they, they submit their test scores or submit their, especially the junior year, tends to be that stressful year where your grades matter. Well, you have experienced a year where you have a semester of grades and a semester of passes and colleges, and look it up, you can verify what I'm saying. Colleges have literally said, hey, we're gonna look at those grades, but we're also gonna look at them in the context of what is going on globally. Universities, state schools, UCs have said, hey, we're not even going to, to look at the SAT and ACT scores for the, the class entering 2020 and 2021. So what does that mean? If they can't quantify you, if they're not looking at your numbers, or at least not looking at them the same way, they're gonna be looking at who you are. They're gonna be looking at the type of person you are, the things you do with your time. It's gonna be about who you are and what you've done and how you've spent your time. And I think that's such a, a beautiful transition. I talked about the pendulum swing earlier that it's no longer purely about these numbers, it's about who you are and what you're capable of. That's what they're going to be looking for. So like I said, I think the class of 2021 is going to be one of the most interesting classes to enter college, maybe ever. The class of 2020. I think it's, it's easy to want to look for silver linings, and I want you to look for silver linings, but I also think it's okay to grieve. It's okay to be upset, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be frustrated, it's okay to, to think of what might have been. But I also want you to look toward the future, what will be. There's this book I love, and kind of track with me for a second. It's called The Road. It's by a guy named Cormac McCarthy. And essentially the book is this like post-apocalyptic future. It doesn't have anything to do with the pandemic, but it's basically about this father and son who are traveling down this road, basically looking for safety, looking for shelter. And along the way, the father is continually telling the son that you're carrying the fire. That's this expression he uses over and over. And it's not like a literal thing. In fact, we don't really even find out what it is specifically. There's this really poignant moment at the end of the book where the father is speaking to the son. And the son's asking his dad basically like about the future. What's it going to look like? and without spoiling anything in the book, things aren't going super well at this moment. This is the interaction between the father and the son. The son says, we're going to be okay, aren't we, Papa? And the dad says, yes, we are. And nothing bad's going to happen to us, Papa? That's right, because we're carrying the fire. Yes, we're carrying the fire. They never define what the fire is in the book. It's kind of a metaphor for life and for the future and, and for hope. And as cheesy as it sounds, I, I think that the class of 2020 are like the carriers of the fire. That the future is uncertain. Parents don't know what's going to happen. Teachers don't know what's going to happen. Kids don't know what's going to happen. And it, it reminds me of this book in the sense that the future in the book is completely uncertain and the father wants to tell the son, hey, it's all, all going to be okay. It's all gonna work out. And he doesn't really tell them that. He says, you're carrying the fire. And remember you're carrying the fire. And I think that is a beautiful metaphor for where we're at and specifically where the class of 2020 is at. We don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm confident, not so much that you're going to be okay, I think you will, but I'm confident that you're going to do extraordinary things, that you're going to be the people who change the world. You're going to be the people who look around at the environment right now and say, hey, it's better, we're on the roads less, what can we do to kind of maintain this? You're gonna be the future who says, hey, I remember that weird time during senior year where I spent a lot of time with my, my family and I'm gonna spend time with my kids more when I have kids someday, because I understand the importance of that now, having lived through that. Maybe your, your home situation or your friend's home situation isn't ideal right now. And maybe you're going to be someone who after this, because you're quote, carrying the fire, you're gonna be someone who remembers that and is committed to providing safety and security for other people, because you weren't able to experience that yourself. And so yeah, I don't know what the future is going to look like. And uh, I, I feel really bad for the seniors who have lost so much. But I, I, I'm confident for what's next, and I'm confident that as cheesy as it is, and I've said that a couple times, that you are carrying the fire. You're carrying this hope for, for a more beautiful future. And so my question for you is, what does that look like? What are you going to carry? What's the, the, the moment or the experience through all this chaos and insanity that you're going to be able to reflect on and say, in the midst of that uncertainty, this is something I was certain about, and I'm going to carry that with me. So class of 2020 and everyone, I'm sorry that you had to be the ones here when the pendulum swung, but I'm not sorry it swung. And I'm hopeful for what comes next, even though it's uncertain.